Good evening. Welcome to Healing for Today. This is Apostle Potters out of Gainesville, Georgia. We're just so happy, amen, to be in your homes teaching the Word of God. You see a new broadcast for 2016. We're just excited. I'm telling you, we're in the midst of a great healing revival that God is doing. I believe there is a great emphasis on the healing power of God. And so you've been watching the broadcast. You realize that God is up to, doing, up to something great, I should say, particularly for the area of healing. I believe there's coming a great mass healing in the body of Christ where people are going to get healed by the masses. Why? Uh, because God did it before, and he has to do it again. I believe the old and the former, or the former and the latter reign, will all come in together to reap what I believe is going to be the greatest healing manifestation like this world has ever seen before. It is called healing for today. And so with that in mind, I want you to realize that you can reach me uh, by website at www.clinton, that's C-L-I-N-T-O-N-P-O-T-T-E-R-S dot org. That's www.clintonpotters.org. Love for you to go back up and view this broadcast. We do have them uh, pre-recorded as well for those of you that's in your area, those that are watching us live right now. There is a also an email address that we love for you to go ahead and email us because I believe that God is doing some powerful things in the lives of his people. And one of the things, it has to do with testimony. The Bible says we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And so that is very important that we overcome by testimony. So once again, ClintonPottersMinistries at gmail.com uh, is the email address that you can actually email us. Once again, you see it on your screen, ClintonPottersMinistries at gmail.com is the email address uh, that you can actually email your testimony. So at this particular time, go ahead and get your Bibles out. Let's get back into the Word of Almighty God. Let's see some things as it relates to healing for today. Let's go to Luke 10. Luke 10, uh, as we get into the Word of God this morning. Well, I said Luke 10, but uh, let's say Luke 4. Luke 4, uh, because we're talking about the anointed for healing, anointing for healing. Amen. Uh, you want to know that God wants you healed. I believe it all in my heart. There's so much teaching out there that's saying God wants you sick, and, but really God wants you healed. And so the Bible has a lot to say uh, about the healing power of God. And so let's look at this. Luke 4, verse 16. The Bible says, so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as the custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handing the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Notice the Bible talks about that Jesus was anointed by God to heal the brokenhearted. He was anointed by God. See, there is what I call an anointing that God would anoint men and women in these last days, what I call with a special gifting from God to minister to the sick. And so when we're talking about the anointing for healing, the anointing is a tangible expression of God's presence that will come upon individuals that will empower them with strength to minister to sickness and disease that faces people's lives. The Bible said that God anointed Jesus. Why? To heal the brokenhearted. Meaning that God has a special interest in your body being well. In other words, God specialized in giving an anointing to cause your body to come back in line. And so the Bible talks about in Luke 14, he said the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. The Spirit of God came up on him. Why? To heal. Heal what? The brokenhearted. So when we're talking about healing, now I'm talking about physical healing, but the Bible says there were those that was broken in heart. There were those that were going through difficult situations in their life, and they needed to be healed. Healed by what? The power of the Holy Ghost. And so the Bible said that God anointed Jesus. What? The power to heal. Heal what? Sickness and disease. What? To cure those things, those ailments that you're facing in your body. 
So you got to understand this, talked about in last broadcast, that you have to line your words up with what the Word of God said. You can no longer speak against what the Bible says concerning your healing. So we're talking about an anointing. There is an anointing. So you say, once again, what is an anointing? It is what I call the tangible presence of God. It is an equipping power. It is a power that God will express or relay and put upon his people to empower them to minister to people. That's why it's not by coincidence that you're watching this broadcast today. Uh, it may be that you're already physically healed, but maybe God's been speaking to you and say, hey, I need you to take this anointing to a world that is hurting. How many of you will agree that the world is hurting? How many people would agree that our world needs healing? God wants people to be healed. It is not the will of God for you to be sick. It is not the will of God for you to die prematurely. It is not the will of God for you to keep having aches and pain in your body. It is the will of God for you to be totally healed from the crown of your head to the very soles of your feet. Well, guess what? That happens with what I call an anointing for healing. There's an anointing. What do you mean by anointing? The anointing is commingled with the Holy Ghost himself. He is that anointing. He is the third person of the Trinity. It is he that empowers you to be able to minister to people. Why? So they can be healed. So that's what he said in Luke 4, that the Spirit of the Lord had come upon me. Why? To heal the brokenhearted. So if you're broken and hearted, God wants to heal that. But there's an anointing. Well, guess what you got to do? You got to expect the anointing of God to, to, to heal your body. There is an anointing. I call the anointing of God that came upon you. It was Jesus' special assignment. That's why I believe in these last days. God is raising up, raising up apostles and pastors and other men and women of God, such as myself, that are anointed with a special endowment to pray for you. There's a special anointing that's on my life. That God says, I call you to minister to the sick. Now, 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 I am definitely not the healer, but Jesus is the healer. But the Bible talks about that if God's power came on Jesus, then that same power would come upon us. And so that's why he said in Luke 4 that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He has equipped me with that ability, that empowerment to do what? Heal those who are broken and hearted. So guess what? If you're broken heart, there's a healing for you. There's an anointing. Matter of fact, as I'm touching right now, there's a tangible anointing of God that's coming within on this stream right now. Uh, viewing us on this broadcast right now. Healing body. Causing organs, tissue, blood cells, everything in your body to function properly according to the Word of God. Well, that, with that, I'm going to go to Acts 10, 38. Because we're talking about on this broadcast the anointing for healing. Acts 10, uh, verse 38. The Bible says, how God anointed, there go that word anointed again, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing what? Good and healing what? All who were oppressed by the what? Devil, for God was with him. Notice the Bible said, God anointed Jesus. Why did God anoint Jesus Christ? He anointed him for healing. Why? To heal people who were sick. Notice the Bible says how he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed. Notice the Bible said, see, because see, sickness is designed to oppress you. Sickness is designed to oppress you physically, mentally, soullessly. Sickness is an oppression. See, when you are oppressed, you are not free to move like you need to move. You're not at liberty to do what God wants you to do. Sickness always limits your physical movement. And the Bible says sickness was op it's oppression. There's a lot of people being oppressed in today. They're oppressed by sickness. They desire to be what God wants them to be. But sickness is holding them down. Disease is holding them down. And so, therefore, they're being oppressed. But there's an anointing that will heal you from mental oppression. Maybe you're oppressed in your mind. Maybe your mind and thoughts are running through your mind, going from left to right, and you're not sure what to do. Guess what? There is an anointing 
that will heal the oppressed. See, oppression didn't come from God. The Bible said oppression came from Satan. The Bible says in St. John 10, verse 10, that the thief came not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it what? More abundantly. Notice the Bible said Satan came to what? Steal, kill, and what? Destroy. But Jesus came that they may have what? Life and life what? More abundantly. That's what the Bible says. He came to give life. So if Jesus came to give life, he didn't come to give sickness. He didn't come to get disease. Oppression is of the devil. That's why they hate the devil so much. He comes to oppress people. That's why I call it healing for today. That's why God said healing for today, not tomorrow, because faith is always in the now. Healing for when? Today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is your day for him. There is an anointing. And what we need to do is expect the anointing of God that comes upon men and women of God who God has anointed. No, they are not the healer, but God has given them a special endowment, a special anointing that will cause them to be able to speak a word, to cause people's lives to be healed. God is raising up men and women of God in these last days. They're going to be equipped with a special endowment. It's called a healing anointing. That's what we're talking about. There is an anointing. There is an anointing to minister to the sick. So the Bible says, how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went out doing good, healing all, all. Knows the word all, A-L-M. Knows that. Not some, but all. See, Jesus wants to heal all. All who were oppressed. See, if you qualify that, if you are the oppressed, then guess what? You qualify for the healing. Notice, A-L-L, -L, all. If you, if you, you, you qualify for being all. The Bible said he healed all. I like that. Why? Because some folks say, well, maybe God has healed some, and some people he don't want to heal you. No, let me tell you something. Jesus wants to heal every one of you out there. Everyone. You mean to say the person that got the counsel of God wants to heal? Oh, yes, he does. How about me with a common cold? Oh, yes. There is no sickness so small, nor no sickness so big that God can't heal. But there's an anointing, and you got to have what I call great expectation and say, God, I expect to be healed. There's an anointing. So what I need you to do is draw upon the anointing of God that's on this stream. You got to draw. You, what do you mean draw? You expect, because that's what I call, there's a tangible anointing that's coming through the television stream right now in your body. And as you're healing this, uh, you're hearing the message, guess what? Your body's getting healed. Because that's an anointing. I'm calling this message today, the anointed for healing. There's an anointing. But you said, okay, well, man of God, that was Jesus. You said how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about. Okay. Well, the Bible says in 1 John 4 and 4, it says, Ye of, of God, little children, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So in other words, in other words I have the healer. On the inside of me, glory to God. The healer is already in your body. He's already in your spirit when you got born again. What you mean born again? Romans 10 verse 9 said, If thou wilt confess that with thy mouth the Lord Jesus believe in thine heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's Romans 10 verse 9. Then he says in 2 Corinthians 5 17, If any man be in Christ, well, how did you get in Christ? Well, you got in Christ when you did Romans 10 and 9. You confess Jesus is Lord. You believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead. The Bible says when you did that, you became a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So on the inside, you have the very nature of God. You have God's DNA on the inside of you. Because you have God's DNA, DNA on the inside of you, then guess what? The Holy Ghost stays and lives in you. Jesus lives in you. The healer lives in you. What you have to do is release the healing. Uh, a healer out of you. You have to expect the anointing of God to come upon your body. 
Have you noticed the woman with the issue of blood? The Bible talks about she heard about a man called Jesus. And the Bible says she pressed her way into the crowd. You remember the story? The Bible said that she had throngs of people that are around her. Matter of fact, the Bible said that she had an issue of blood, that the blood never dried up. So she had some issues going on with, with a blood disease. And she, that there was no cure. The Bible said she had gone to the uh, doctor. And I'll say this on records, I am for doctors, thank God for doctors. Amen. If it wasn't for some doctors, we wouldn't be living today. But I believe there is a great physician. His name is Jesus Christ. And when natural healing does not work, there is a supernatural divine healing that comes from Jesus Christ. I'm just believing God that we can transition people over to start believing God for the supernatural healing versus this natural world's way, of, world's way of healing, because the natural world's way of healing, it doesn't last, because that system is designed to keep you on medicine for the rest of your life. And unfortunately, as we listen to all these medications and things that are going on, sometimes the medicine we take, it heals one part, but it destroys another part of your body. So I believe in divine healing. I, I believe in the best. I, I want the God's divine healing. I, 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 I want God's Word to work like medicine. Matter of fact, the Bible did say that, that the Word of God is like medicine over in the book of Proverbs. He said, let not this Word depart out of the eyes uh, for its life to those who find Him, and healing and help to all thy flesh. So the Word now is a medicine. The Word now is a medicine that is designed to heal your physical body. It's called the Word of Almighty God, people of God. And so we're talking about an anointing uh, of healing. So verse 38 again, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good. Notice how Jesus called healing good. Healing is not bad, it's good. Now, if Jesus called healing good, then sickness must be bad. Okay, think about it before. If Jesus called healing good, then sickness must be bad. So sickness is bad, but healing is good. But the Bible says, he went about doing good. What do you mean? What? So if the Bible said he went about doing good, well, what is the good? The good is the healing. He healed. That's the good thing that he did. He went around doing good. What was the good? Healing folks that was sick. Why? Because sickness is bad. Well, why you say that? Because some people say, well, you know, God put this sickness on me because he's trying to teach me something. Well, that's not scripture. That's not the word of God. God doesn't put sickness, disease on you to teach you something. No more than a parent who loved their son and daughter would on purpose put their son's and daughter's hand on the stove, turn it up, and say, you know, I do this because I'm trying to teach you something. Well, we know that that's not right in, in our society today that would be considered child abuse. So Jesus is not a child abuser. God is not a child abuser. So why he's going to put sickness and disease on you to teach you something? See, these are the erroneous teachings and doctrines and the doctrines of men that have been filtrated in our society today that cause people not to walk in divine healing. One person asked me ago, uh, a time ago, apostle, uh, uh, a preacher, why, why don't we see much healing uh, uh, today? Is because people have been so watered down with unbelief and teachings that does now go against that, that goes against the word of Almighty God. And so the Bible talks about this where Jesus went to his hometown. Actually, Luke 4. We just read that earlier. You know, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, uh, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, uh, uh, to heal the brokenhearted, restore sight to the blind. Preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Then the Bible said he closed the book, rolled up the scroll, uh, put it back uh, 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 on the podium there. The Bible said all of them, uh, eyes were fastened upon him. And then one person said, is it not Joseph's son? Uh, then they, they didn't even perceive him right, so they couldn't receive the anointing. Then he said, no prophet is honored in his own country. The reason why some healings can't happen, because people don't honor the word of God. And what you don't honor, you cannot receive. I'll say that again. What you don't honor, you'll not receive. And so the Bible talks about that even though Jesus wanted to heal everybody in his hometown, the Bible said he did little to no miracles. Well, why did Jesus do little to no miracles? Was it that he was not anointed? Oh, well, that's not true because Luke 4, 18, Acts 10, 30, they say Jesus was anointed. But what was it? 
until people can expect. That's what I'm talking about. There is an anointing for healing. But you have to expect the anointing to heal your body. There were people during Jesus' day that even though Jesus was anointed, and in this particular scripture, Acts 10, 38, he healed all of them that were sick. Why? Because they were expecting for their bodies to be healed. Where in, over in Luke 4, he couldn't heal really nobody. Why? Was Jesus less anointed from Luke 4, 18 over to Acts 10, 38? No, he wasn't less anointed. I'll tell you what it is. It's the people who expect and believe God to receive healing. So what I'm saying out there today, God wants you well. You got to get your faith up there and say, I'm believing God for my healing. I know what the doctor said, but what did Jesus say? You know we said earlier? There is a difference between a fact, F-A-C-T, versus the truth, T-R-U-T-H. There may be a fact that you got this physical sickness in your body. It may be a fact that your body is aching with pain, but that's not the truth of God's word. The Bible said truth will set you free. Truth will cause you to be free. The truth is, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. The, the, the truth said he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Heal. No, that's the truth that God's word says there. So the truth will change the fact. But guess what? I got to expect the anointing. So the anointing for healing is always ever present. You just got to expect and believe God that God is going to do some powerful things relatively to the healing power of God. So we see here once again, Acts 10, 30, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost. With power, who went out doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. So we see oppression comes from the devil. And so many times you have to realize this. Satan is the one who comes with those sickness, disease upon you. He's trying to oppress you. Why? He knows where you're trying to go. He knows what you're trying to do. But guess what? You can't let him oppress you no more. You got to say, you know what? I'm going to stand up. I'm going to rise up. I'm going to do what I need to do. I got to go ahead and do what God's called me to do. I refuse to be sick another day in my life. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's Isaiah 54, 17. So guess what? You now have to now expect the anointing of healing to come in your life. Well, well man of God, how do I expect the anointing of God? You get your faith out there. Well, Romans 10, verse 17 said it like this. Faith comes by what? Hearing, and hearing comes by what? The Word of God. So, in other words, faith is stimulated, faith is developed when I hear the Word of Almighty God. So, faith comes, faith comes, faith comes, faith comes. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the what? Word of Almighty God. That's how your faith is stimulated. So that's why I'm teaching on anointing for healing. Because as I teach on it, guess what? Your faith ought to be stirred up. You ought to say, my God, that, that's an anointing for my healing. And I need to go ahead and believe God. So as this man of God is talking on this television stream or talking on that whatever device you got, iPhone, Android, tablet, so forth and so on, you know what? I'm putting my faith out there for divine healing in my life. Your faith will get you there. The same faith that's gotten you through this right now with the same faith to get your body healed. It is the will of God for you to be healed. It is God's will for your body to line up. Why? There's an anointing for healing. There's an anointing. The word anointing also means to be smeared upon. So God wants to smear upon his healing upon your body. You know, it's almost like if you are physically uh, sick in your body, and sometimes they'll give you some ointment to put on that part of your body, and what it does is soothes you. Well, think of the anointing of God for healing like that. It comes in to soothe your body, but not only soothing your body, but it's healing everything that's in there. It's causing the pain to leave. It's causing that, 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 that thing that's causing a mishap in your body. It's causing that to now vanish away. He was wounded 
for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. Chastisement of his peace was upon me, and by his stripes we are healed. So he said in Acts 10, 30, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. God was with him. So let me know. See, God is in this. Why are you saying that? Because there are so many people thinking God wants them sick. Tradition has taught us. When you're going to stop believing in tradition and say, you know what? I believe in the healing power of God. And you got it. And because tradition has told us, well, you know, Sometimes God will do it, and sometimes he won't. And matter of fact, he did it last years ago. He don't, he's not doing it today. Well, that's not the truth. The Bible says in Malachi 3, verse 6, he said it like this. I am the Lord thy God, and I change not. Then you go into the New Testament, Hebrews, he said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So, Old Testament say he don't change. New Testament say he's the same. So I, 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 so I say this. If he healed back then, he's healing right now. And if he's healing right now, he's going to heal tomorrow. So who are you going to believe out there today? Or are you going to believe the doctor's report? Or are you going to believe your friend's report? Or are you going to believe what this word said? And you're going to go ahead and get your healing. I mean, so you, you, you have to think about, okay, God, wh what do I believe? I believe that Jesus never changed. If he healed folks back in, my God, he has to heal my body right now. See, that's faith pressure connecting to what I call the anointed for healing. That's trying to come through these TV streams right now to get into your body that calls everything to line up. Notice here, he doesn't change. These are, no, he's still healing folks. That's why I believe in these last days there is a greater revelation of the power of God in these last days concerning healing. There's anointing. It's a special endowment. And many of you that are watching me on this broadcast, not only does God want to heal your body, but he wants you to take the same power that he uses to heal your body. He wants you to take that same power and take it to somebody else and minister healing to them so that they can live a long, prosperous life with their loved ones and with their family. That's what we're talking about, the healing power of God. And so those things you have to understand today, he was wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquity. Why did he do that? To heal your body. It's an anointing today. And so many women of God, we're about to stop here momentarily, but there's an anointing. And I need you to get your faith out there. Your faith has to be stimulated, focused, targeted. Saying, God, I, I, I want to, you know, I got to start 2016 off healed. You, you got to do that. And, and let me say this. Your faith has to be proportioned to what you want God, in other words, to do. What do you say? I, I, I want my faith to be strong so I can get healed. Well, that's why we're teaching the Word of God. Matter of fact, the Bible said it like this. If you have faith as a grain of a what? Mustard seed. Say unto this mountain, be thou removed, shall not doubt in her heart, but believe those things which you say it shall come to pass. Ye shall have whatsoever you say it. Faith is what you need to connect to this anointing. So right now, your faith is stirred up. I want you to pull on God right now for the anointing that's on my life. Same anointing that was on Jesus. Bible says, so as he is, so are we in this world. I've been called by God to pray for you, to eradicate sickness and disease. 1 John 3, 8 said, for this reason, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he may destroy or undo the works of the devil. The anointing came to undo what Satan been trying to do over so many years in our society. Let God undo it today in your life. Let God undo sickness today in your life. He's right there trying to just need you to reach out by faith. So right where you are, there's an anointing. I, I need you to go ahead and put your hand on part of that part of your body that's not functioning right. Right there. There we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we talk about the anointing for healing, 
I thank you for the anointing of God, which is the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God. I release the anointing for healing into their bodies right now. Thank you for correcting everything that needs to be corrected. Thank you for things lining up according to the Word of God, commanding blood pressure to be normal, sugar to be normal, curse counsel, sickness and disease, commanding to dry up, wood up, and be no more. Thank you that the body is aligning itself up with the will of God. I come against every bad report, every negative report. I declare they should live and not die. I curse lupus. I curse every sickness, every disease that was designed to target their body and to limit their mobility. Father, we thank you that the oppressor have been found out, and now we release them from the oppression. So in the authority of Jesus' name, I command their body to be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, man of God, woman of God, if you sense that God has done something in your body, I need you to go ahead and email me. I, I, I want to hear what God is doing. The announcer will put up the email address here right on the screen for you. Clinton Potter's Ministries at gmail.com. Email us. Let us know that God has healed your body. Why? Because you're doing some powerful things. So we're leaving it up right now. That's www.clintonpotters.org. Also, Clinton Potters Ministries at gmail.com. I want to hear your testimony because I believe there's an anointing. I believe there's an anointing to heal bodies. God wants you to do that today. We thank you so much. We appreciate all that you're doing. One final thought. As you journey on to this fifth Sunday of this new year, think about praying to be a CPM partner. What is a CPM partner? A CPM partner is men and women who will say, Apostle Potters, I want you to take this healing power to the nation, to the world. It is men and women of God who God has placed on their heart to sow into this ministry on a regular basis. There is no gift too large. There is no gift too small for you to sow into this ministry. Every bit helps us to travel the United States and to the nations of the world to bring a healing Jesus. Would you agree that people need to be healed today? Pray about being a partner today. I know God will speak to your heart. All of us, we can change the world through the healing power of God. We love you so much. Thank God for you. 2016, it's your best year. It's going to be a great year. I'm telling you, God is doing some powerful things. I'm so zoned into the healing power of God because I know that he's doing these in this last day. So remember, Jesus wants you well. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you next week.